Hi, and welcome to Nishcraft. My name is Cassie, and I'm your host. So today we are going to be making the ripple stitch, which is done um, in single crochet. And I'm going to be using a solid color yarn to do this one for you guys, because I think that you can see the texture a lot better that way. And like I just said, this is a textured stitch. So um, what makes the single crochet stitch um, is it's, it's for the most part, it lies flat, okay? Um, and the same is true with the double crochet that we've done together. And this um, half double crochet is mostly a non-textured stitch, although it does have this ridge right here, okay? That's something that's different about it. So what we're going to be doing today is that we're going to be making a actually textured um, item by making this pattern. And I just wanted to let you know that you can make this with any yarn you have lying around and, and the size hook that's appropriate for that yarn. The reason that I've been making dishcloths with mine is that I've found that for beginners it helps to have a small project to work on that by the end of the tutorial you can be really proud of and you'll actually have something to show for all of the work you put on when you were practicing. Um, for this particular tutorial, I'm using a four weight cotton yarn and a J hook and I'm using a J hook instead of an I hook because J hooks to me are a little bit easier to work with um, for beginners. And it's because they have just a slightly bigger hook than, than an I, but if you want to use an I hook, that's fine, okay? I am also going to be using two stitch markers. Um, that said, I do want to address something. I had told you guys that I wanted to do a tutorial about how to make nesting baskets today. And I really do want to do that. Um, I made the first one last night um, so that I could make sure that I had it um, had the right size and had, had the pattern down and I was going to show you how to make the medium one and then by knowing how to make the medium one you'd know how to make the small and the large. Um, however, I have a coldy thing right now. I'm, I'm not feeling that great so I'm going to save that for tomorrow so I can preserve my voice while I rest it a little bit but we're still going to be doing this stitch tutorial. So I just wanted to make sure you guys knew that, yes, I'm still going to be doing that. I'm just going to wait one day and you will be able to make baskets in time for Easter. No problem. Um, and if you want to make make a basket along with me tomorrow when I'm there, um, all you need is a size six. It's called a chunky weight um, yarn, a size six weight. And I got two skeins in contrasting colors. Um, so you can either get two skeins in two contrasting colors, or you can get two skeins in one color, or you can just get one skein and make one basket, okay? It's, it's, it's just, it's up to you what you want to do. Um, or if you just want to practice making one, you can just make it with whatever yarn you have lying around. I can say that it's the chunky weight that makes it possible for it to stand up, though. And if you're making it with a different weight yarn, um, you'll just need some spray starch, um, and that will help stiffen the fabric, okay? So, that said, let's go ahead and focus on the ripple stitch. Oh, I didn't realize that my microphone cord was visible that whole time. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, I, I use a lapel mark, mic so that you guys can hear me. <laughs> I wonder if that's been visible in any of the other videos and I just haven't noticed. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so the first thing is that we are going to make a slip knot. And I've already done a tutorial on how to make a slip knot and how to chain, but I'm just going to do it again just in case you guys are choosing this video to watch first. You make a slip knot by pulling the end of the string over and making a loop. And you pull the loop up, and you take the long part of the string and you pull it through. And then you pull both until you get that knot and then you can just put your hook around that and you can just pull on it to tighten it up and that is a slip knot. All right, so now that we have a slip knot, we're going to chain 20, okay? The chain um, on your hook does not count as a chain. That is um, just that slip knot that we made, okay? So we have one, two, three, four, and to chain, you just you just pull a loop through the loop on your hook, and that's a chain. Okay, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. So we have a chain of twenty there. And this is what your chain of 20 should look like so far. What we're going to do now is that we are going to put a single crochet in each one of these chains, skipping the first one. Okay, we skip the first one because that's going to be our turning chain. So to single crochet, I have a video tutorial on that, but I'll just go ahead and go, go over it with it. You skip one, the first loop. There's a loop on your hook, then the next one. You skip that one and you go into this loop right here. You pull up a loop. You've got two loops on your hook and then you pull through two, all right? So the very first row in this ripple stitch is a single crochet row into that foundation chain. And since I just made that first stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and put my stitch marker through it so that I will not get confused and accidentally crochet into that when I'm coming back around, all right? So again, we're just gonna be doing a single crochet across that whole row. And since there's only a few stitches, I'm gonna go ahead and do that with you right here. Just pull up a loop and then pull through both of those loops. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm, I'm using a solid color because it'll show the definition of that texture so much better than a variegated color will, um, or a color that changes colors very quickly. <clears throat> so we have got just single crochets all the way across until you come to that end. So when you're done with this, you're gonna have a dishcloth if you're using cotton yarn like me. The reason we use cotton is that when cotton comes in contact with heat, it does not melt. Um, acrylic is made out of plastics. So acrylic will melt if it's in contact with too much heat. Um, when you're washing dishes or washing your face, you should not come in contact with heat much, but when you um, have your dish rags on the counter and you're pulling uh, something out of the oven and if you put it down on that dish rag and the dish rag is a acrylic you will um, end up melting that acrylic and it will not only not protect your countertop or table from from the hot object but it will also melt that acrylic right into <laughs> the top and it'll just be a mess so that's why we use that. The reason we don't use wool is because wool will felt when it is comes into contact with water. So and that's why we're using cotton or some kind of yarn that is meant for household objects. All right, so this is the end of that first row, which is just a single crochet all the way across, okay? So the beginning of the second row, you chain one, okay, and then you turn. That's called your turning chain. And for the rest of this piece, you're gonna be doing the exact same thing for every single row. So to make the ripple stitch, you'll put, you will identify the, the stitch, right? Like you do every single time you crochet, you'll identify the stitch, right? But this time you're going to only be working with that back loop right there, that back loop. We're not gonna be working with the front loop, we're gonna be working with the back loop. Sorry, there's like a gnat flying around. <laughs> okay, I'm having issues today. So we have the front loop and the back loop. You're going to be working into that back loop and I'll show you what that looks like. So when you put your needle through or your hook through, I mean, you're going to put it through just the back loop. We're gonna skip putting it through the front loop. We're gonna pull up a loop, and then we're going to single crochet like normal. 
The only difference is we're skipping that first loop. So again, just looking at the camera here, making sure you can see, all right, go into that. We don't go into that loop. That's the front loop. We're going into that back loop. Go into that back loop, pull up a loop, okay? So now you have two loops on your hook and then pull through those two loops and that is the ripple stitch. Just go into that back loop and single crochet across. Just single crocheting into that back loop. You'll find that the front loop ends up making this kind of bump here and that is the texture that you will get with this stitch. The texture ends up looking very elegant um, it's a very, very simple and fast way to make a ridged item. Um, I've mentioned before that I have cat and uh, I hear one of them uh, meowing. And so if you guys can hear that, that's the cranky cat meowing. She always sounds cranky. But yes, when you make any item with this ripple stitch, you'll end up getting this beautiful texture on both sides. It's, it is a reversible pattern which means that, or it's a reversible stitch, which means that regardless of which side you're working with, you will see the same pattern on both sides or you'll see the same stitch definition on both sides. So you go in that back loop, pull, pull up a loop and then pull through two and that is that single crochet. Okay, so if you're keeping up with me, which I mean, if you're not, that's fine. That's, that's normal, you're just learning and please don't get discouraged if you can't crochet as fast as me um, but if you're keeping up with me we're almost to the end of this this first row and I am going to then show you how to continue on and do every single row after this one okay so again you just crochet into that back loop and that that's what forms that ripple in the fabric you can make so many things with this stitch. I've made um, blankets out of it. The stitch does not work up as fast as other blanket patterns, but I found that it makes a very elegant blanket and that texture, it ends up um, creating a lot of, uh, it makes the blanket more warm and snugly. So I just took out that stitch marker because we're at the very last stitch. I put my hook through that back loop in that one Pull, it, pull up a loop and then pull through two. And I am now done with this row. I'm gonna chain one and turn. And now we can see the ripple stitch from this side and we can see that we are creating this, this little ripple here. And we're going to go back into that last stitch that we worked. We're gonna go into the back loop again. Okay, and we're going to do single crochet into that back loop and this is exactly what you do along for the rest of the dishcloth is that you will just keep going into that back loop i'm going to go ahead and put a stitch marker into the first stitch we created on this row so that i will know that that's the last stitch when i come back and that is just something I do to make sure that I don't add a stitch at the end. It's something that I like to teach beginners because, <laughs> how funny, I, I didn't put it on this one. It's something I like to teach beginners because if you're not used to it, to crocheting and you haven't gotten a feel for it, that last turning chain there can sometimes look like a stitch. And when I was first beginning, I would crochet into that chaining or that that chain space right there when the turning stitch because I would think that that was a stitch but if I put a stitch marker into that stitch then I'll know that that's a stitch not that turning chain so that's why I, I teach people to do it that way um, you don't have to do that obviously but when I learned I was very young I was nine and um, that would have helped <laughs> if I had known that. So again, you know, this whole, this whole um, um, stitch design is just done in the back loop every single time you turn. 
Now, obviously, on this side, the back loop of this is the front loop of this, but that's what creates that texture there. See how that's a ripple? It's, oh, it's so elegant. I love this stitch. But yeah, we just go through that back loop. We let we leave that front loop alone and let that just kind of stick up like a little bump there. And it creates that kind of wave looking thing. And it's, gosh, it's so pretty. I, I maybe I'm just delighted by very simple things, but I just think that this is such an elegant stitch. It's underrepresented <laughs> in crochet, I think. Um, not certain I'd like to make a wearable out of this stitch, although I, I can see how that would look really good, but it is just such a pretty stitch for, um, to really show off um, so a solid color if you really want that color to shine. And I thought that it would make a really good first stitch to teach after the beginners, which were the single, double, and half double, because it's so elegant. This is actually the first stitch that I learned when I was learning to crochet. Um, my grandma taught me how to do this ripple stitch. She didn't teach me the single crochet or the double crochet. Although I guess technically this is a single crochet. She just taught me how to do this ripple stitch. And then I learned all the rest on my own. But I think it's just stunning. Okay, so again, we're on the next row and we're just working into that back loop. And we continue to do that for the rest of the work. So if you are with me and you are making a dish rag, then we are going to go ahead and keep doing this stitch back and forth until we get a square. And if you have got the stitch down, you don't really feel like making a dish rag, that's fine. Um, I am going to come back though when I'm done with this and show you how to weave in your ends. And I, I just want to hold this up to you guys so you can see all that definition there in case you're having trouble um, at all with trying to figure out what it's supposed to look like. It's got this kind of ripple definition there and I'm turning it so that you can see it from different angles here. One of my lights just went out because it wants to be creepy I guess. <laughs> so again I'm going to just go ahead and continue. All you do is you crochet into that back loop. When you get to the end you do the turning chain and then you continue crocheting in the back loop whichever direction you're facing and that will create this beautiful this beautiful ripple and I'm really excited about you guys seeing um, the the work when I'm done with it um, because it's gonna really make this look really good um, just wanted to say because I had been saying it for other yarns um, the yarn I'm working with right now this is a peaches and cream sorry peaches and cream it's in the color sunshine so you can see that right there sunshine it's just a yellow it's a solid yellow one um, for weight and all of that it, it I, I, th I believe my partner got this at Walmart so it's, it's very easy to get you can always order cotton yarn, yarn online uh, you don't have to get the super cheap one but I just suggest getting it because if you're just starting out you don't know if you're gonna stick with this or not and while I would love it if you did stick with it because it's just such a fun thing to do um, you know spending like a dollar ninety nine or however much it costs for this which is probably a dollar ninety nine or less um, isn't going to break your bank or anything versus going out and getting like this, you know, really, really nice cotton yarn for like $20 a ball, <laughs> you know? So that's why I tell people to work with cotton and also because you get the dish rag. But yes, I will continue doing this. I will come back. I will show you how to bind off and tie in and, and weave in your ends. And then we will be done with our fourth dish rag. Um, and I'm really excited to show that to you. All right, hi, I'm back and I have crocheted up this beautiful ripple ridge stitch. So while I was gone, I went ahead and looked it up just to make sure that I was calling it the right thing. And this doesn't have a name that I could find was consistent online. 
I'm just going to show it to you up close. It is just so pretty and elegant. Um, I saw that some people were calling it the ridge stitch, which makes sense because it, it has these ridges in it, right? Um, and there's a crochet, crochet stitch called the royal rib stitch, which is made with um, the half double crochet, all right? That's not what this is. This is what I was told was a ripple stitch and what I am going to call for the purpose of this video, the ripple ridge stitch. Um, but if you were to do a search for a ripple stitch, what you'll find if you do like an image search is what I was told was called a wave stitch. <laughs> so I think different people are taught different terminologies for these, but just so you know, most people would call this a um, ridge stitch and my grandmother called this a, a ripple stitch and again it is just so elegant um, if you guys want I can absolutely show you how to do the royal ridge stitch um, that one just has a little bit more definition than this one does it's a little bit more textured um, so I just wanted to point that out I don't know how many rows I did. I wasn't um, counting. And uh, again, I don't feel that great right now. So I just wanted to just work it up as quickly as possible so that I could come back here and show you how to finish off. So we have um, two more stitches left on mine. So I'm going to finish off by crocheting into that back loop two more single crochet. And for me, this is always going to be the ripple stitch, but I'm going to call this the ripple ridge stitch just so that I make sure that you guys don't get confused and think that I'm talking about the wave stitch. And so I snip that. I'm going to pull it tight here. just like that. There we go. And I've shown you how to do it with a crochet hook. Um, I guess I'm just gonna, well, I'll, show, I'll just do it with a crochet hook this time because the last time I did it with a, with a needle, the last few times, these, these, uh, there's different ways that you can crochet it in. Actually, I just decided I'm gonna show you with a needle because I'm gonna, I wanna go through those loops there or those loops here. And then again, it doesn't matter if it's plastic or steel or whatever it's made out of as long as you can put your yarn through the eye of that needle that's all that matters so i'm going to be going through so i put it on the needle and i'm just going to put this needle underneath this crochet here all right so you, you can see i'm going underneath all of those little Oh, I'm trying to hold this so that you guys can see it well. Oops, I'm so sorry. My orientation's all weird because this is on camera. So that's how you do it. Keep going underneath there until you feel like it's not going to come out. And then you just pull it through. <clears throat> and then tug on this a little bit so it settles in like this and snip it as close to the fabric as you can without snipping the fabric of course and it just disappears underneath those underneath those loops and it's not going to come out and we already know that it's got that knot in it so it's not going to come out and again you do the same thing with this one um just uh, put it in the eye of that needle go underneath these stitches with the needle you could do this with a crochet hook too depending on how tight your stitches are it might be easier to do it with a with the needle anyway and just pull it through like that and that little piece of yarn doesn't want to pull so I'm gonna go ahead and give it a tug with my fingers there and again stretch it out like that so that it just kind of disappears in there and you snip off this end here there you go so now you have this beautiful textured stitch and again i'm not quite certain what to call it like i said i was told that this was called a ripple stitch so 
that's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> but for the purpose of this tutorial, the name of this tutorial, we're going to call this the Ripple Ridge Stitch. Oh, it's so beautiful. I love this stitch so much. And I will go ahead and do the Royal Ridge Stitch as well so that any of you guys watching will <clears throat> know the difference between the two because this is made doing a different technique than the than the Royal Ridge Stitch. And the Royal Ridge Stitch in um, half double crochet, it's um, the definition of this ripple is a little bit more bold. <laughs> so that's the best way that I can explain it. Um, but either way, um, tomorrow I'm going to teach you guys how to make a basket. As long as my voice is fine, I'm going <laughs> to teach you guys how to make a basket. We'll get that up for you in time for for Easter and all of that. And we can. I'm going to make nesting baskets. And once you learn one, you're going to be able to make all sizes. And I believe, I, I think that the next stitch I'm going to teach you is the Alpine stitch, which will also teach you how to do the, um, the, oh, what's it called? The front post double crochet. So you'll learn the front post double crochet and you'll, you'll learn a, a stitch um, tutorial where, where it'll be a pattern that you can make scarves and sweaters and blankets, anything you can think of out of because it's just so pretty. But we just made this beautiful stitch. I'm going to go ahead and arrange all of my items on here so that it shows up really nicely. And I'm going to take a picture of this. And this will be the first picture you see before you click on this video. Oh, I just really want that ripple to show. <laughs> all right, guys. So um, thank you so much for joining me. If you like this tutorial, please hit the like button, go ahead and subscribe if you like tutorials, because I am going to be going over so many different stitches um, with you. I'm going to post a video every day with a new stitch tutorial, and I'm also going to be doing yarn unboxings and um, showing my finished projects and talking to you guys. And I also am really um, looking forward to bringing a book section to this channel. So I'm going to be bringing that next week and, and it's not going to be, um, is I'm not going to bring as much book information on as I'm doing for crafting, but I do want to go ahead and share my love of books with you guys too. So I'm really, really looking forward to the channel and how it is going so far and where it's going to go. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much. And I will see you tomorrow.